Uh, welcome to track one. It's a 430 talk. Uh, this is Nicholas. It is his second time speaking. So there would be no shots involved. Sorry. Um, anyway, give him a warm welcome. Thank you. All right, so the title of this talk is Poking the S in SD Cards. Uh, when I started this, I was wondering why SD stands for Secure Digital. So there might be something secure, right? But exactly how it works, because it's just a simple memory card you put it in, you place your files, and that's it. Oh, ah, yeah, sorry. Oh, yeah, way better. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so SD stands for Secure Digital. I was asking why is uh, secure for? Uh, this is not a physical attack, so everything is only about the protocol that is using by uh, that is used by the, the SD cards. So the first step is beforehand. What is an SD card? Everybody saw an SD card, of course. Um, it's basically a microcontroller which interface the SD interface with a flash memory. Uh, if you want more information, you can see there was a, there's a great talk by Bunny and Cubs uh, that was uh, at the CCC uh, where he decapped uh, the SD cards. He showed exactly how it works from the inside. But we are not doing exactly this. We are going to play with uh, uh, the communication protocols. And basically, those cards do support three different communication protocols the SPI, classic SPI communication the SD or UHS-1 bus protocol which uses more data lines so the transfer speeds are way better and there's a newer one maybe you didn't see it uh, you, you don't see that often it's the UHS-2 which has way more uh, connectors a second row of connectors and it uses differential lines to uh, to transfer even uh, faster uh, data so uh, to get access to the specifications and to know exactly how it works from the inside, uh, I can, you can go to the sdcards.org website. They, pr they uh, offer uh, some general specs in simplified form. The document is only 262 pages, so it's quite easy to read, right? And it presents the general description on how to interact with SD cards but uh, uh, at a really low level. For instance, this is the initialization sequence. I won't go into the details. Don't worry. It's just that there's a lot of different comments and depending on the type of cards, uh, his generation, you need to send command. Maybe the card will not respond. Then you have to do another thing. Then maybe it will respond that is an invalid command. So that means it's a third kind of card. So yeah, it's a bit messy, but once you read and uh, poke with it, you, you 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 cannot get some uh, replies back to her from the card, so this is good. So uh, I won't go into the details of all the PDF, just so you know that the protocol is basically a query and response uh, protocol. So as the master, so the the device, your computer, sorry, you send a command, then the card will will reply back back with more information. Uh, for instance, uh, there's the CMD0. This is the first command you need to send to the card. It will basically uh, reinitialize the, its status and it will reply with a OK, I'm here. So you know that your card is available. Uh, there's the communication protocol. It's using uh, six bits uh, for a command. Then you need to send up to 32 bits of arguments. There's the CRC and some bits. Good thing is that in the SPI mode, uh, the CRC, you, you don't need the CRC in the SPI mode, so you can just put all zeros and that's fine. As I said, the protocol is a bit of a mess because uh, depending on the command, you have seven different response formats. So sometimes it's only eight bits that you receive by, uh, back, sometimes it's 32 bits, sometimes uh, it just sends an acknowledge, then it sends a packet back, so Every command has to uh, has to has its own pass parser to to pass the the reply. To communicate with the uh, to communicate with the f the the memory or the fi the files within the card, and four bytes is not that much. So there's also a block transfer mode where basically you send first uh, uh, block start command, which is just 0xfe. 
and then you run uh, you send all your data then uh, you need to send the CRC and then the card will uh, will process uh, the information. There's no length checking by itself. By default, it's 512 uh, bytes. But you uh, you have a comment, which is the comment uh, 16, that allows you to change the data size. So now that I know exactly, well, not exactly, but now that I know how it works, <coughs> uh, as I looked for all the security features of the card. So the first uh, one that shows up is the SDMI uh, uh, specifications, which is uh, unf unfortunately not the, the the purpose of this talk, because it's only uh, all the documentation is only available to SD members, and there's no way to uh, get this file except if you try to Google it, because apparently it has been indexed and it's it can be downloaded directly. Um, but there's also another uh, way, another uh, possibility to protect your data from the card, and it's available to two commands which allow to set a password on on the card. So when you enter the uh, when you set the password, the next time you place the card in it, you cannot read anything from it unless you provide the password again. Then the card would be unlocked, and with this, uh, once it's unlocked, it's acting exactly like a normal SD card. Also, those comments, uh, those specific comments uh, for the um, password protection are mandatory to to get the SD label. So, basically, nearly every card, uh, every SD card on the market supports the, those comments. But it's not used by any operating system I know. So, <coughs> so what I did, basically, uh, just using my laptop to send comments was not really uh, easy to do. So I used uh, a div an Hydrobus device, which is kind of a bus pirate clone, and I did a, a small Python script to drive the the SPI bus and to be able to send uh, raw commands to the device. So basically, here's the setup. I have the interface there. I communicate with it in USB, and I send command, and then there's the SPI communication going through this, and you have the SD card adapter right here. So how does it work? <coughs> you have the CMD42 command, which is uh, his common name is lock and lock, and it's uh, it allows you to set a password up to 16 bytes long. I say bytes and not characters because you are not limited to printable characters. You can set any byte you like. So the key space is uh, of uh, uh, 128 bits. So kind of uh, kind of a lot, and. It's difficult it or nearly impossible to brute force. It would be take way much time. So the command takes uh different parameters. Uh basically it's just there are some bits that you can uh, set to the card and they will uh, trigger different functions. So basically you have the set and reset passwords, you have the clear password, so if you forgot your password you can use the clear bit to make the card reset so it will wipe the flash and then the card is uh, unlocked again. You have the lock and unlock command so at first uh, I used it uh, to try to lock the card and uh, to unlock it you actually have to set the bit to zero. That's kind of strange. You can also erase the password once the card is unlocked and uh, the COP is, uh, is a new mode that I will talk about later. So, how to unlock exactly an SD card in practice? You have to send this CMD42 command, then uh, the data block with the, with the lock bit unset, the password bytes, uh, a CRC, which is uh, uh, useless, but you have to send it, and then the card, uh, the, the what will the card do? It will uh, uh, set uh, its uh, data outline to the ground. While it's processing the password, and once it's done, the line will be up again, and you can read the status of the card. Funny thing is that if the card is uh, sending you a comment that it's busy trying to uh, analyze your password, what you can do is something quite fun. I placed it here. You can see um, this is a logic analyzer output. So you can see here it's the command I sent to the card. Here's the, here, here sorry, is the password block. 
and here is the response from the card. So you can see that the line is put down to zero for some time while the card is uh, processing my password. So I did put a password of one, two, three, four, five, six, and if I zoom in this part here, if I zoom in, you can see that when I put a password length of five characters, it will take approximately 55 microseconds to process. And if I put six characters, it takes a bit more time to process. So basically, <coughs> what happens is that the SD card, the password checking functions is uh, vulnerable to a timing attack. And you are able to uh, verify that uh, the password has the correct length based on the time it takes to uh, reply. So you try to send a password with uh, the length one, it takes some time, two, it takes some time, three, maybe it takes more time so you know that the password is uh, of length three. And then it will try to uh, check every character one after the other. So you can basically brute force a byte per byte and recover the password from the SD card. Sorry. So, having all those schematics and taking all those uh, measurements by hand is not really easy to do. So, since this information here, the the fact that the data uh, the data line is at zero, um, what I can do is basically use my SPI interface and try to read as much bits as I can. And since all those bits will be at zero. I can count them and I will kind of know how many time it took to uh to uh, generate to check the password. And once the once I detect a one again, so once it's finished, I know that the length is uh the the computation is over and I can do something. In practice what does happen? <coughs> I did uh, this small script here and if I set the uh, my famous password 123456 and I run my script, you can see that for password length of zero, it took, uh, it read uh, 122 zeros before the card was uh, available again. For one, it read 124 zeros. And at length six, you see it's the only one which was a bit longer, so you know that the correct length is six. I have a demo which unfortunately is not live. All right. So what I do here is I initialize the card. I can get its status. So for now it's unlocked. I will send the lock command with the password I will set. So I put my famous password 123456. I will check the status of the card. It's in locked mode now. So I'm not able to read data from it. I will receive an invalid command. And there's no data from the card. No. Oh. What did I do? Yeah. So now I can run my brute force tool. <coughs> so it will track all the, the different uh, password lengths to find the correct value. It says that's okay. And then it will try every byte combination to try to find my password. So it takes a bit of time. And then it brute force the last characters. And once my card is unlocked and I try to read the data, I can get data from the card. So once I have my card which was working, I was quite happy of course, but I was thinking so maybe there are more cards that have this the same problem. So I bought uh, different SD cards, I went to, to the store, I bought some cards from different vendors, different sizes. Uh, I also asked colleagues and friends to, to lend me their cards just to, to have a look of it and guess what? The only card I, I locked permanently, I was, I'm still don't know how to unlock it, basically it's broken, is uh, a colleague uh, of mine, uh, not, my, uh, not uh, one of the, my cards, unfortunately. So I did lock all those cards with the 123456 password and I tried my brute force again. And it sometimes worked, it sometimes didn't, and sometimes there was some funny results. So for instance, I get some uh, Sony SD cards and it has, let's say, a protection 
on the brute force which uh, makes it uh, refuse the CMD42 command after the third uh, failed attempt. That's quite good. The only thing is that you uh, just need to send one uh, command zero so you just reset the card by the interface and then you have three more tries so it's just a bit uh, it's just a bit uh, longer but not that much. The Sony US uh, micro, uh, micro SD cards also uh, have something different where basically I was not able to uh, read uh, the zeros. So I know that there was something but I was not able to read it because it was really really uh, uh, fast. So I tried with a logic analyzer. It was still not fast anymore, uh, so not fast enough. So I went to a colleague of mine and uh, bro uh, borrowed an os a huge oscilloscope and I'm able to uh, sample way faster and then I'm able to see the sm really small difference between lengths 5 and lengths 6. 5, 6, 5, 6. Don't see it, that's normal but <laughs> yeah, you can still do it, it's just a uh, bit more complicated. Uh, there's also uh, something strange uh, in on Kingst uh, Kingston SD cards where I was able to find to to find the 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 password length but then I couldn't find any uh, I couldn't brute force the every uh byte so I did some tests again and basically what I did was uh I set up the oscilloscope again put uh, five zeros then six zeros so I can find the length that's fine then I set the first by the first bytes to be correct second one third one still nothing and at the fourth one you see a time difference. So what happens is that uh, this card uh, checks the password by groups of four bytes. So I would assume that the microcontroller inside is a 32 bit one. So it's a bit different so the the attack is still doable but you have to brute force uh, by groups of 32 bits. So in my results uh, I have all those cards uh Please be, be careful about about what's uh, written here because this is the this is the the name that is written on the card, but inside of the card there's a another it might be another manufacturer that's created the chip you know, so uh, the name is not uh, correlated to the manufacturer of the card so this uh, column might not be that useful this one is more is more, you can see those cards. Uh, and this information, the manufacturer ID is uh, sent is sent by the card, and unfortunately, there's no uh, public source of information about uh, which ID corresponds to which uh, manufacturer. So you you can find some of them uh, on the internet, but for some of those, like this one, I just don't know who made it. Also, all those cards were bought this year, so we are in 2019. But the production date on the card is around 2010 or 2011, something about this. So, again, this is a value taken from the card. I'm not sure it was uh, it's the real production date. It's just the data that is in the inside the of the the card. Nearly all of those were vulnerable. The only one that uh, I was not able to uh, use is the the are the SanDisk models. And I was not able to use uh, the the Samsung cards because when I tried to use the CMD42 command, the card responds with an invalid command. So I don't know how they got the the logo, but it's it's working. Uh, so to conclude, uh, I would say it's a pretty useless vulnerability because no operating system supports uh, this password locking function. Hopefully, because uh, it was not that useful. It also affects a lot of manufacturers, uh, and good thing to do is, uh, yeah, read the specs. There are a lot of information, a lot of uh, things, and things you don't expect from a card, right? Also, as a future work, uh, as I said, there's a, the COP uh, function. Basically, it's a, uh, you can set a password to protect uh, the card uh, to uh, to password protect the password clear mechanism. I don't know why it's that, but a, this is a new feature. I was not able to get a card that works with, uh, that has COP enabled. So uh, maybe I will try to find and, yeah, maybe there's also another uh, vulnerability on those. 
So a few takeaways. Uh, SD cards uh, just have a, a, a password protection, as we said. Uh, most of the cards uh, are vulnerable to a timing attacks, uh, and that's pretty much it. Thank you. Oh, uh, by the way, if you want to have a live demo, uh, I will be uh, after the talk. I will go to the hardware hacking village, so we can do the Q and A there and having a live demo. Thank you. <laughs>